Hello, I'd like to talk to you about Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil is undoubtedly one of the greatest mysteries of J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium, and especially of The Lord of the Rings. Many people have asked the questions, who is Tom Bombadil? And have we come up with lots of answers? They've also asked the question, what is Tom Bombadil? And that is the real sticking point. Exactly what is he? He's an enigma. He's odd. And Tolkien referred to both of this. He said not only that he was odd and that he was an enigma, an enigmatic, but Tolkien also said that he intentionally made him so, or that he intentionally left him so. So following the death of J.R.R. Tolkien, we are left with this odd enigma, this conundrum, this puzzle, this riddle. Who is he and what is he? I could go through and tell you who he is based on what Tolkien has written, Tolkien has said both in his published works and his draft notes, his manuscripts and his letters and conversations, lots of records. There's lots of material around uh, the reference Tom Bombadil, specifically in regards to what Tolkien actually said and wrote. And obviously subsequent to his death, there's been lots and lots of discussion in regards to individuals looking, analysing, trying to answer those questions. In my view, the majority of them the vast majority of them haven't got the right answer. There's been a few people who, in my view, have come very, very close. And what I've done is I've looked at the issue myself. I've taken on board with some of those people who got very close. And I've come up with my own view as to not only who he is, but what he is. And why he's so odd. Why he is so enigmatic. And I only reached this understanding, this conclusion, when I looked at all the material about what Tolkien had written, what Tolkien had said, what Tolkien had published about Bombadil, and in part what he, the same applies to Goldbury, his wife, his partner, the water spirit. And I looked at all that, and then... I had a flash when I realised that the main reason it's been so difficult to unlock and answer those questions is because of Tolkien's reticence and also be talk because of his deep, deep Catholic religion. He's, he was a Roman Catholic, a staunch Roman Catholic. And as he said in his letters the Lord of the Rings for example was very much a Catholic work but he hid that he hid it superficially he rewrote it, he redrafted to remove obvious Catholic religious elements he masked them he hid them he deleted them he included, he included them he did lots of rewriting because he didn't want to be accused, like his friend C.S. Lewis with, with the Narnia tales, Tolkien didn't want to be accused of writing a mere allegory, where Proto Baggins, for example, is Jesus Christ, mounting with the ring, going on, trying to, climbing up the hill to, to the to destroy the ring. He didn't want Tolkien, did not want Frodo or Gandalf or Aragorn to be equated with Jesus Christ or Arwan to be equated with the Virgin Mary or even Goldberg. He didn't want those obvious analogies but he did want his work to be Catholic, to be religious, to be about good versus evil, to have a moral, moral centre, to have all those elements but in the background 
not to have gods or prayers or any religious obvious religious overtones so he was very successful in not making the Lord of the Rings an allegory or the Hobbit but there was one exception and he noted this himself and that one exception was Tom Bombadil he actually said in one of his letters that he was an allegorical character and what did he mean by that? Well, it appears to me, and there's many, many reasons for this, that Tom Bombadil is a representation of, is a manifestation of, is Tolkien's version of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is part of what Tolkien refers to as the Blessed Trinity, which is a core element of the Catholic religion. The Blessed Trinity comprises God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. All three are God. All are part of one, one God. But they're three distinct. And that concept of three in one, or one, in, one with three parts, is a very difficult one to get your head around. And though Tolkien felt it necessary and important to put this aspect of the Trinity within the Lord of the Rings he was not prepared to go down that whole path of explaining it because it really opened up a veritable can of worms and so he he didn't balk at including it it was a very useful and as he said important device but he did balk at explaining it and even in his later life you could see he was hedging around he didn't want to go down that path but as he also said in his letters he didn't leave enough clues for us to unravel it and make our own mind up and understand it ourselves and that's what we can do so Tom Bombadil is is God but Tolkien said God was not manifest in his legendarium in the Lord of the Rings how can Tom Bombadil be God when Tolkien said he isn't there's no God but then Tolkien also said yes God is in the Lord of the Rings is mentioned once or twice he is the traditional God of Tolkien's legendarium is Eru Iluvatar and many Tolkien scholars know about Iluvatar widely mentioned it's quite clear that this is the God of the legendarium the God who created through the music of the Aenur Aenur the Aenur Lindal created the universe created Arda, Middle-earth, the people, the, the Vala, the Maya, the elves, dwarves, men, the sun, the moon, the, the stars, the um, everything on the planet. So Eru Luvatar is a god. He's a god, the father figure. But the process of creation, and this is as God as Tolkien wrote was complex it was included the music of the Aenor but then Tolkien goes and writes Tom Bombadil and says that he is fatherless now the only fatherless figure in the universe according to Tolkien's Catholic faith is the Holy Spirit because the Trinity God comprises the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Son is derived from the Father. He's still God. So you've got two gods, the Father and the Son. The Son has a Father, God the Father. The Holy Spirit is part of God, but he's fatherless, has no father. Every other being in the universe has a father. Every being. God created so who created the Holy Spirit 
who created God? These, this is a question that is very, very difficult to answer, but it's part of the whole problem with Tom Bombadil. 